What up? This is Robert Ory. Or three pointer. There is it. You might know me as Big Shot Bob. To Ory for three. Oh, oh unbelievable. <laughs> this guy is off the charts. What's going on, Big Shot Bob? Robert Ory from downtown. And Robert Ory from downtown Nash Vegas, baby. <laughs> uh, Rob, man, you've been you've been in the South more hey. the last couple weeks. That I'm like, man, forget it. I, I love the dirty South, man. You know, tell you what, it's the best place to be. Tell you I'm what, good, dude. man. Yeah, we miss seeing you, dude. <laughs> we got to get you down to the, down to the A, man. We got to see you down here in Atlanta. Oh, I, yeah. Are you done? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get to the A. Yeah, yeah, you're deal. You got a lot going on. So we've had a we've uh, we've had a we've had a we've had a couple weeks, man, between all of us. Uh, we, we've had a, we've know, had a lot right? of stuff going on. So um, uh, the week before, we were like kind of we were late. We were hit and miss because you were promoting uh, World's Toughest Test, which we'll we'll talk about because um, I think you got Des Bryant kicked off the show. But we'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about it. Um, I did not get you, it. No, you did. Up. You did. You did. No. We'll, we'll talk, we'll just I was him. trying to get him to raise his hand. Okay. He didn't want to raise You got him it. kicked off the show. You got him kicked off the show. I, I don't blame him for not wanting to do press. You got him thrown off the show. Um, so we'll talk about that in a second. So you were doing World Stuff as Test. And um, we did We did not have a show last week. Um, my Unfortunately, uh, last weekend, my dad passed, um, mm-hmm. which... You know, is something, and I and I kind of I kind of shake my head sometimes about, you know, you and I, Rob, lead. I want to say we lead different lives, and that we've come from different places. You, you're an NBA All Star. I'm a professional idiot. Uh, it, we've gone totally different roads in life, but our lives parallel each other sometimes so wildly. <laughs> um, you know, your your dad. Know, unfortunately, right? you know, we lost your father as well. Uh, right around the time you were, I think you were filming World's Toughest Test is when it happened. You were talking about it last night Correct. on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, it, and here we are, you know, only a few months later and, and, you know, I lost my dad. So, you know, we didn't have a show last week. So thanks for everybody for, um, reaching out and just going, Hey, where's the show, man? <laughs> where's, are you guys doing a show this week? What's going on? So, uh, that's why we didn't have a show last week, but, uh, for everybody that did know, I, I appreciate your thoughts and prayers. You know, everybody's just trying to kind of heal and go forward, um, but uh, yeah, it sucks. It ju- it sucks. It's just a weird time in your life when you lose somebody like a parent. It's just odd. Yes. You know, you just it's like I keep wanting to call him and ask him stuff, and I'm like, I can't. <laughs> you know, and it's like ah, I know. like where? Come on. But you, as you know, it's, if you look at my phone, um, I have all my parents' messages. I don't delete them. No, so I have yeah. them. I, it's funny because yeah. I did the same thing. Like I go through my texts every now and then I kind of just clean them mm-hmm. up and, and delete a bunch of old threads and stuff. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to have this text thread I have with my dad forever. As long as I have this phone, I'm probably going to have this text thread. You know, it's just, I can't, there's nothing. I can't bring myself to, to not keep that, you know, but it, my dad didn't want a cell phone, man. Like what I need a cell phone. My wife got one. I just use hers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, my dad was the same That's way. He was, he, would. he was so reluctant to get one, and then as soon as we got one, he was on like, and I'm not lying. I want to say like level 1900 of Candy Crush. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> like he, he got hooked on Candy Crush hard, and I was like, should we have an intervention for Dad? Because he's candy on crush. that Candy Crush all day, man. But you know, he was retired, and you know, he 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 fell into it. But uh, you know, it's just it's a weird time in your life when you go through stuff like that. But uh. And I don't have to explain it to you because you went through it. All right. Well, let's talk yeah. about what I joked about at the top of the show. Were you trying to get Des to just volunteer? Is yes. that what you did? Because they were like, who wants to redeem themselves? And like three, four people throw their hands up. And Des is like, arms crossed, not doing it. And then here comes Rob, shoulder nudge, shoulder um, nudge. And they're like, oh, you want to do it? Well, let's get over here and do it. No, no because I knew, I know, you're like, you get, you get a feel for people, right? And you know those people like, oh, you ain't gonna volunteer? You're going. And I was trying to get him to raise his hand so he'd be like, oh, me, I'll go. And since he didn't raise his hand, they're like, okay, you're the person Guess we're what? gonna pick. Yeah, you're up. <laughs> you're up. Uh, if you haven't watched World's Toughest Test, uh, we're talking about the episode that aired uh, this past Monday night. Uh, and it was funny because I think after the first week of the show, I went back to our text exchange and I'm just like scrolling through and I'm like, he did say he was on world's toughest test, right? Because I'm like, 
First episode of the first episode of the show. They got all these celebrities crossing the water on high rope, and I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't wait to see how he does on this. We didn't see you. Nothing. Nothing. Never made. Did hey, you not do I, it? I'm, I'm on the editing room floor. <laughs> hey, you, <laughs> hey, you see the preview? Like, mm, I can't do it. That was me saying I couldn't cross it, man. Hey, when I stepped out on that platform and I got ready to step over there, I got dizzy, man. I thought I was about to fall off the thing. I was like, I can't do it. I now, let me, I'll it. say this. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll say this. Cause there, you know, I saw a couple of people who did fall through like the yes. little, oh, yeah. uh, the spaces. Mm-hmm. And I'm imagining, I'm shooting you some bail here. <laughs> I'm imagining all six, nine, six, ten of you trying to fall not through graceful. those not and graceful. And that's just not going to work. No, not graceful. No. You know, it's so funny you say that because everything started going through my mind. Uh, I think you can see where uh, I think it was uh, Tara when she fell through the miller. Oh, a lot of she people were falling through almost the broke her leg when she fell. Yeah, and my whole point is like, I'm so tall, I'll be that asshole that's hanging upside down with my foot stuck in there and my leg broke. Like, yeah. hey, hey, and what can they do? They can't go. They can't come get you. They got to just wheel you up. <laughs> and so, but. Yeah, I mean some yeah, of the then, some of the tinier people that fell through that yeah. middle looked like mm-hmm. they barely cleared it, and that's why I was yes. like, "Man, if you hit, if you fall, there's no space for you to get through. Like you're gonna hit three, four, five things yeah. going through on the yeah. way down." So, yeah. So, and plus, it, this is part they didn't show. You see how they show that little cut to get through to get down to the platform? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm so wide, oh. I couldn't get through the damn cut. I had to maneuver and, oh, and get put all, my body yeah. in a certain position to get through. And I was like, man, if they ain't prepared for me to get through this hole, to get down to that platform, to go across that trapeze, like, oh, hell no. That 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 rope ain't built for me, no. and this trapeze ain't built for me. Hell no, it isn't. <laughs> hell no, it isn't. Uh, all right, well, that explains why we didn't see you do the first stunt, because I was like, why didn't yeah. they show him? I figured they would show everybody. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the other one was the one, the, two things from last night, the water. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. I mean, like, it. that, I mean, you people, and I said, when I saw you come up, you, you, I think you held it together pretty well, but there yeah. were people, like, when they would come up out of that cold water that couldn't talk like they couldn't get a word out because the the, how how bad was the water man it was weird because aaron you know she did like this she stuck her face in the water like oh no 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 you gotta go all the way (laughs) all the way under and then she came she came up like and and funny and angela slash black china came up (laughs) i knew but for me we take cold baths as athletes so it wasn't like a big deal for me Okay. You know, I, my whole mindset was like, I do this all the time. Well, I used to do this. I, was like, I used to do it. So when I got there, I was like, okay, this is not cold. Even, I don't know. I didn't get a chance to see it because we were coming to Tennessee. Even as the, the, the staff was like, are you peeing in the water? I'm like, no. No, they didn't, like, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't put that on the show. They didn't put that on the show. Because it it didn't bother me. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not going to pee in this water. Let's something <laughs> Swim with my wee wee. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's what you're thinking. Of course, it is. you know how you know how they say when you like in certain countries like Brazil and you go in with don't pee in the water because something will swim up your pee pee. Yeah, uh-uh. that that was. I your said concern. that was me. That was your concern. That was my concern. But uh, yeah, the, yeah, I mean, it was it was wild that people couldn't even get a word out. Like people came up out of that water and it was like, <gasps> like they couldn't even speak. It was just God. And, it, it yeah, me. it was. But see. um one of the guys who did they show him going in the water first with one of the staff? Oh yeah, to demonstrate. Yeah, you see when he came up, he was he was discombobulated for me. He like uh uh my miles made it, like I'm like and everybody was like oh shit that's cold. I'm like no, nah. I even volunteered to go first because I said hey staff can I go first because they had to ask you questions. I'm like shit if you get to me I'm probably gonna be last. I ain't remember what these fucking questions are. I'm like, <laughs> Your concern was more remembering the question than, exactly. than it was the cold water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the other thing from last night was the rocks. Holy crap. Where you had to pick the rock and carry the rock and run around with the freaking rock. I think that was last night. On last that night, was that the first there. night. Oh, was it That's the first, first night? night. Yeah. God bless, man. No yeah, way. y'all look funny that first night. Like when y'all were running in and y'all had to run around. Like – 
it's like y'all were entering in the room and y'all were kind of like running around in a circle. And I'm like, what the heck are they doing? Yeah, we and were I doing uh, running. I said, look at him all six nine, just just it's hop skipping and running all around there. I, I, the funny part is I didn't have to run that fast because I said, okay, I'm not going to be last. I'm not going to be first. So I'm being in the middle. So my long legs allowed me to, okay, I'm doing the do to do. So. Yeah. <laughs> bailed your ass out. They bailed, they bailed me out. out. The only thing that it was my problem was when we was trying to do um, uh, burpees, my pants, they didn't fit right. So they kept falling down. So I had to adjust my pants because, <laughs> and then by the time it's like, okay, just stop. Because I went to the side because the person behind me, the first time I kicked them, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, staff, can I move over? And so I had to move over to the other side because when you do burpees, I, they didn't adjust for my length, I guess. And I was, I, kicked, I forgot who, I think it was Neil or someone behind me, the bachelor that I kicked. So I had to move over. But it's fun to watch, man. Uh, it's it's, it's fun. I, I'm, I'm still floored you did this because it is, man, it is no joke. Like yeah. everything I've seen so far, I'm like hard pass on everything. Yeah. I, I, you know what the, the the down part? I guarantee you, you would have did it because you'd have felt like like Captain America running down that dam. Oh, and that that yeah. stuff doesn't freak me out too much. Yeah. It, it's I get I get panicky underwater, underwater mm-hmm. where I can't find a way up or I have to struggle out of something. That I that's where I start to yeah yeah. So so you couldn't have did the. the Helicopter being submerged in water. Then. Uh, probably not. No, that one probably would have. That would have. That would have gotten to me. But I think that's the sort yeah. of the thing of that show and those challenges is everybody yeah. reacts different to different stuff. You know, like Des yeah. did not want to get in that water. No, like that, he didn't. that it, it wasn't even that deep. It was just the yeah. idea of being submerged in the water that he just it just got to him. They actually changed it. They actually changed it because they had a, they cut. We had to stand there for like an hour and a half, maybe two hours because they had to cut another hole because they said that was too big of a drop off. And everybody was like, oh, you're too short. You're too short. You too sh-. Because you're supposed to um, like, like, you know, sit there and dog paddle as you answer the questions. And it was like, uh, this is too dangerous because I guess it was a little current. <laughs> you see how everybody had the rope attached to them? Yeah. They didn't want to get snatched up under the ice. If you got snatched up under the ice, Cancel Christmas. Yeah, that, yeah, no, no <laughs> you know, so, that's it. Yeah. So, all right. Well, if you're not watching yeah. World's Toughest Test, um, yeah. you can go back and watch last night's episode and watch Rob get uh, Des Bryant thrown off the show. Did you see how much Savannah threw up though? Oh, dude, that was hard to watch. Hey, when but she was going down part? that wall because that was just straight fear. You yeah, know, that was just, and she just started throwing up when she looked down. It was just like, "Get me off the wall!" And they're like, "The only way you're getting off the wall is if you go down the wall." And she was like, <laughs> "Hey, Wah. she was pissed. She oh, wanted to, you know, we we had to talk off, you know. From, she wanted to leave right after that, but uh, it's so weird because the way they edit the show, they went first. They went very first. So I was like saying, "Please don't let me be able to throw up. Please don't let me be on oh. the throw up side." So I wasn't on the throw up side. I was on the other side. I was yeah. like, thank you. <laughs> See, that's not how they edited it. Last night, I think yeah, the, the first thing they showed was you and Des. You and Des were yeah. the first ones up. So, yeah. Yeah. And then and you we smoked like, Des we like down, fifth, down that wall, man. Fifth group. Yeah. You smoked him down that wall. You 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 got him good. So <laughs> you got him good. But uh, it's fun to watch. It's very fun to watch. But yeah. by the way, while we were all off, uh, uh, Dame Lillard got traded to the Bucks, <laughs> so I saw that while we were off, and I was like, "Of course we're off this week." The Dame thing yep. blows up, so uh, th- uh, I'll try to look at the the summation of how this kind of went down. Uh, Three team trade. We know Dame goes to Milwaukee. The Blazers got Drew Holiday and first round draft capital. Portland uh, also sent three guys to the Suns in exchange for DeAndre Ayton. Uh, and then the Blazers immediately traded Drew Holiday to the Celtics for Malcolm, Brog- Malcolm Brogdon, Robert Williams the third, and more first round draft capital. So you're going to get uh, Dame, Giannis, and Milwaukee. Uh, you got Aiton and Scoot with Grant and Williams in Portland, and now this new, I'm going to say, big three in Boston with uh, Tatum, uh, Brown, and uh, Drew Holiday. Yeah, I, I think with it would you know I knew exactly when. Drew was in that that pick. He wasn't gonna last in in, in Portland because they go into youth movement. And don't be surprised if they get rid of Time Lord too, because he's a nice piece that you think someone needs a shot blocker 
or a guy who can you know solidify their defense if he if he can stay healthy. So they might mess around and move him too because you already got eight in there. You don't need two big guys unless they want to use him as a backup fade. But I would try to get a nice little piece because Portland, not this year, not next year, maybe in a couple of years, they're going to be a nice little team to be feared. But um, I, I still, for me, when I look at the trade, the Dame letter to them, I'm like, it's it's going to be a little weird because I don't think Dame, you know, outside of CJ, has really played off the ball. Because think about it. Giannis has to play on the ball. Now, Milton has to play on the ball. Are they able to coexist? I, I've only time with Tim, but I'm really excited to see what that team can do together. Yeah. Yeah. I I think on the Blazers side, you know, regardless of how long it may take them to actually be formidable or be contenders, at the least, you know, this year and next year, they'll be fun to watch because they're young. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. young. You'll have a re energized DeAndre Aiden because I saw the clips on Instagram when he got to Portland. He was like a kid in the candy store. He couldn't wait to get out of Phoenix. Yeah, he looked, I mean, he looked hey, happy. Hey, been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> he, look, he couldn't wait to get out of Phoenix. He looked re-energized. He looked yeah. excited. He looked enthusiastic. So no telling what type of guy. We could be getting the guy that you expected that you took number one overall in 2018. And mm-hmm. so, you know, what they do with um, Robert Williams as well, you know, somebody could, des- like you said, he may, you know, you got Aiden, you may not need him. Somebody could desperately use him or they can keep him as a backup. Yeah. But I Is think, a backup. <laughs> yeah. I think two things. I think this Dame to Milwaukee move is going to be pretty scary for the league, especially the Eastern Conference, especially in a pick and roll setting. That's because what Dame do- was talking about, the pick and roll. Yeah. I, I just. And I also know that Dame is in a new situation. Dame's not a selfish guy. So he knows he's going to a situation where if this is Giannis' team, you know, he was who he was before I got there. And I'm here to help take them to the next level. And Giannis knows this as well. You got two unselfish guys together. And I think whatever kinks they got to work out, they'll work it out because of their personalities. And Boston, on the perimeter, they are nasty. (laughs) In that that front court, they are Thin as tissue paper. Yo, you ain't kidding. <laughs> they are you like they kidding. are like they are like yes. wet toilet paper because if you expecting Porzingis to hold you up in the front court and, and he and he is as fragile as a China doll, okay. And and guess hey, what? And, uh, and Al old Horford, ass Horford. Yes. Well, <laughs> Al Horford. Al Horford's got to be in his forties, right? Late thirties. <laughs> hey, hey, he ain't forty like, years he old yet. He got be like thirty. I feel like I've been watching Al years. Horford for twenty years in the NBA. I, I know, right? He was winning a championship at, uh, at Florida, and then next thing you know, like he's in the league. You know, winning, winning for you guys down in, in Atlanta. Well, so. I don't, don't want to say winning, and I didn't really didn't win a whole. Uh, I mean, we won. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, went to the when, playoffs. You get, when you get swept in the Eastern Conference Finals, you don't have a lot to brag about. You know what I mean? There were moments. There were moments. There were moments. Mm-hmm. There, there sure was. It was an all-star for you guys. You know? No, it yeah. was. Look, and I like Al. I, Al's always been a good player. Yeah. I, he's a great I like guy. I like Al Horford a lot. I'm not trying to dump on Al Horford. I, I really do like him. But <laughs> uh, if, as do you envision that? That backcourt working though with with those three guys in Boston, yeah, I do because Holiday is a uh, he's an unselfish player. He he's is. a pretty yeah. good facilitator, and what he also adds is the defense on the perimeter that you miss with no longer having Marcus Smart. Correct he adds that back uh, to mm-hmm. some degree. So now you get that back after you, because we always said losing Marcus Smart was was big time because of his defense. So now you get that back, even a little older, but you still get a defensive presence with Drew Holiday. And, and a more consistent score um, yeah. and a better facilitator too. So I, I think they replaced him with a better version of him, a Marcus Smart. But like you said, that you think about it, when you think about the East though, the East, you know, uh, is, is him beat right now? So, hmm. Nobody in the East has any bigs now, but Milwaukee. And I'm really interested to see how that works out with, with James over there in the East, because the East is going to be nasty, though. The East is going to be real nasty. <laughs> I, I, I look, man. I don't think I don't think Philly's counting on James for anything. Did he show up? No. no. Daryl Moore even spoke on it. They he said, him. "I ain't got nothing to say about that." They find him. 
If for not yeah. showing up for media day, they find him. Yeah. I, I wish I could just sit down with James. And James, just go in, kick ass, and play your way out of there, dude. As if you go in and kick ass, someone's going to say, oh, shit, James is on another level. Just take him. You already been through this one time where you held out in Houston. You got pissed off. No, you, you, you've you done that twice now. Just go play your way out of there. He just I, hates Daryl Morey. He yeah, hates Daryl Morey. I don't and, understand. Because this is the second go around with Daryl Morey, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and now yeah, in Houston. So, I... I don't know what it is with him because if he goes and he balls out, then Daryl Morey in the front office is going to do what they're supposed to do. They're going to set the price super high to the point where then people who were interested in trading for him ain't going to want to trade for him because they don't want to give up what they're going to ask for. Yeah, and it's still think he just he just at the end of the day, I know you're making a shit ton of money. Don't don't give him back their money, man. Go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, go show up. Yeah, go play. Just just do what you need to do. You know, don't, and don't you know? Don't 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 be like, hey, fuck y'all, and I'm be here and be a, just be a be a good player, great player that you are. Go in there and handle the situation professionally, and just play because this is a game you love. This is why you do this, man. Don't hold out. Just just I, I love to say, don't give them back their money. <laughs> no, that's true. But uh, here's the thing, though. I think for him, he's dug himself into such a position against Daryl Morey that for him to go out and play. It almost like turns his back on everything he said for the last month plus about the Sixers and wanting out of Philadelphia and I'll never play for Daryl Morey. He's a liar, all that stuff. So he's sort of kind of talked himself into a corner where he's like, even if his brain says the best move for me is to go play my way out of this, it's almost like he can't go against himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's like, I've said people... too much to go out and play now. And my whole thing is, you in in the world of basketball, you would you never have to see Daryl Morey. You just said, "Hey, don't come around me. I'm gonna handle this, but I don't want to see your face." You know, unless we in a team meeting setting or something like that. You know, just you don't have to see this dude just because he's not doing what you want. To Still, though, you're doing what you love. And yeah, I've played with a lot of guys I didn't like, but I just say them. I, like they said, I didn't talk to him. I just nodded my head at him and kept it moving. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Doesn't seem like a lot of the rest of the league's too interested in James either. I, I think the Heat uh, have because much it's said the, they're I out. think it's, it's the history, though. Think about it. It's the right. history of what you've done. When you're not happy, you force your way out of something. So people now you're becoming damaged goods, and so yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just uh, it's crazy. Um, I'm actually we, tired of the James Harden saga too. Oh no! So, I'm, I mean, I'm look. I'm just happy Dame got moved. Because now we don't have to talk yeah, about yeah. that shit anymore. <laughs> like we can put the <laughs> we can put the Dame Lillard. Will he leave Portland? Will he stay? We can that's to bed. Let's we're done with this. We can uh, we can just go back and say two K. You got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Two K. Ronnie two K. Y'all got it. Ronnie two K. Had him in Miami, man. Got to call Ronnie. Gotta Speaking tell of that. um things that are weird, um Jimmy Butler. Oh my. <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna get to Tar- that in a minute. Ooh. Karen, it's Terrence Trent Darby hair. <laughs> he's got the Karen hair going, man. This like, man, Jimmy Butler needs to his... see a manager, and he needs to talk to somebody right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the whole. He's, he's got he's... courtside Karen vibe all over him with this one. Emo, <laughs> goth. He was saying thing emo he has Jimmy. going on. Yeah. I don't. All right, okay. dude, it's just a bit for media day. It's just Jimmy it is. having fun. I, I think from the look at the dress last year, and then it's the day this time. He's just you gotta you gotta love him though. You gotta love the fact that he's just having fun with it. That's just Jimmy. You gotta love it. I I, I think it's hysterical. I and it's it's just it's a media day bit. And and look, explain him. You've done you've you've done tons of media days, right? You've had to have. Mm-hmm. How boring is media day? It seems you know like what? it's terminally boring. Uh, Maybe I'm well, wrong. it's for me. It was different because you know, media day for us was we finally get to see everybody together. These guys now have these training facilities; they go places together, they meet up before training camp. Like, no, we were all doing our things in our respective cities, but now it was a good way to say, "Hey, you know, talk, hang out." We were excited because we knew the year was about to start. Our goal was to win a championship. Was about to start. You know, so many things. It's like the first day of school. You're so excited to see everybody. You're so excited to get started. And then day two of training camp, when you're sore and you look at them motherfuckers like, man, I can't stand you. <laughs> <laughs> it all changes. But, yeah, 
we I, I love Media Day because we are the thing that when you play for a great organization or a successful organization, your time is limited. They say, Oh, you got a hard out in ten minutes. Oh, done. You move on. You get it done. Yeah. You know, and because they've done it for so long, you get so many requests and they just in and out. It's real simple. Okay. I think Jimmy was just trying to have fun on a day that mm-hmm. was normally, oh man, I got to sit here and answer the same questions <laughs> I answered the whole off season. Yeah. And in the, in the post game press conferences after last year's postseason, I got to do it all again. <laughs> I got to answer all the but, same questions again. Hey, when I saw it, I was like, damn, he's doing, uh, what's this guy's Millie? Is it Millie Vanilli? Oh, Millie Vanilli. Playing on the rain. Oh, yeah, you're, you're throwing <laughs> like, it back. He looked like all those Millie old Vanilli. I like it. Millie yeah. Vanilli, Terrence Tritt, Darby. I was like, I see you. Yeah. All right, Jimmy. Uh, the other thing came out of media day that I thought was kind of interesting was uh, Anthony Davis said he's Uh-oh. going to effort to play all 82 games this year. Isn't that <laughs> what you subscribe to do every year? Uh, yes, but I, I mean, is that is that even a reasonable goal? And I'm not saying that to be a dick, but it's like, A, you're going to have games you're going to sit out no matter what. Even if you're healthy all the way through the year, you're not you're not going to play all 82. That's not realistic. But shouldn't you set that bar maybe just a t- just a touch lower? No, because it's a lose. I, I think it's a lose lose. You know, to say oh yeah, to say I'm gonna know, I'm gonna try and play sixty. Yeah, and and, and now it's like and you're already 60. setting the bar, yeah. and then so now you have to start where everybody else is eighty two. Yours is now sixty, and you ain't even counting for injuries. Because he can't control that. And that's the thing about saying, I'm going to try to play all 82 games. That's great to say. And that's what you should strive to do. But with your injury history, I mean, it's not like you're hoping to go out and get injured. But you can't control that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's great to hear him say it. But I, okay, cool. <laughs> Don't get injured. No, it, he's not. He's been bad. So, oh, yeah. I'm on a plan to play like, let's see, 42 games. Is half, 41 is half. Uh, about 45. Oh, Lord, you Lord. gotta set you gotta set your bar high, man. You know, that'd be like saying when you come into in a season, yeah, I hope to make the playoffs. No, but everybody said we hope we want to win a championship. You gotta set your bar high. Strive right. for greatness. Okay. <laughs> I like it. I like it. No, uh, but what I do find interesting is, you know, they asked him about the Nuggets and their offseason jabs and things like that. And AD said, you know, him and Braun talked a lot during the offseason. They said they couldn't wait to get back. And they couldn't wait. He said that just fueled them all offseason. And he said Denver, basically Denver's going to have to answer for that this season. So, you know, we'll see. Denver's had their fun as they should have because they, they won the title. Yeah. They swept the Lakers. When you sweep somebody. Oh, Mike doesn't care. <laughs> you know, exactly. So not only did you get beat, but you got swept. So yep. you got to take whatever that team is going to say throughout the duration of the rest of the summer up until the beginning of the uh, of the season. So we'll see what the Lakers have up their sleeve. Would they get them the first night? Yeah, opening night. Opening night. Ring night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ring That's a good night. place to start. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. And uh, they extended Reeves. I think we all knew that was coming. Oh, yeah. So we got the Reeves extension as well. Yeah. So that just stuff that happened a lot while of good- we were in and out. A lot of good things coming out about him. You know, uh, Darvin Ham, well, obviously you signed the extension, but Darvin Ham really, really likes Reeves. Like we saw last year, but he really likes him coming into this season, thinks he, thinks he can really take another step. Yeah. It, it was weird, though, because I, I remember when the season started last year, I'm like, why is he not playing Reeves? Does he not know Reeves is a gamer? I guess, you know, that's what it, and it, when I said that to say this because you have to get to know your players as a coach, and the players have to get to know their coaches, and players have to get to know each other. So I hope that this team that they got, you know, if they, let's just say they don't win an issue, that they don't switch it up again next year. Because ever since the bubble championship, this has been a – every year has been a different team. Yeah. The coaches, you know, have changed. The players have changed. Get some consistency. Let me see somebody try to run it back if you win a championship. Let me see some guys get to know each other so they can have some consistency. And they got to do this as a Lake order because they're young now. And these pieces that they have, they can control it. Now, I know they say LeBron's not young, but hell, he looked better than half the guys out there. So I think they need some consistency and don't keep changing up the chemistry. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, here's the thing. As much as I do agree with that, we all know that business gets in the way. Especially yep. when 
a guy looks at himself as more valuable than what he's getting paid the previous season and you get agents involved and you get other teams involved. Oh, we saw what he did for you all. We think he can play a bigger role for us, so we're going to pay him more. And you're in a league where guys are trying to make as much as they can while they can. And sometimes – now, some guys are going to want to stay because they're like, you know what, we had something great. I want to come back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have a player's option, they'll exercise that. Or they have a team option, and the team wants to bring them back. But is that guy's mentality now? You know, do they really want to win championships and try to run it back, or do they want to get paid? You know, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yes, absolutely right. And I, hey, I, 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 to me though, I, going back to this Drew Holiday trade, I was like, that trade had already been in the mix because it happened really fast. Because I was like, hmm, Drew Holiday ain't gonna be there long. Lakers, what you got to get Drew? Because you get Drew on your team, oh, boy. <laughs> but, hey, you can do it. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, I imagine a, a lot of those pieces had been lined up in this yeah. conversation, and it took a little bit of extra to tip it. But, yeah, it, you're right. It happened very quick, and it was wildly complicated because within two days it was like ten guys had moved, and it was like, whoa, yeah. between three, four oh, teams. You know what? You know who we haven't talked about that I think is going to be moved to is Brogdon. Malcolm Because Brogdon yeah. doesn't fit that in Portland. Even though he's a hell of a you know player, it's it's like I'm looking at that young, that youth movement. I'm like, even though Brogdon is young, six men of the year, he can he could be possibly moved to for something else and picks or something because yeah. he could he could do a, a championship quality team, a caliber team of better be better for them than. You know, sitting in Portland trying to teach these young guys and be a backup because let's, let's be honest, he probably is not going to start. So, and no, I know he's sure he's fine with that because he's six million a year, but that's a good piece for a team. Let's say like Denver, because Denver needs another guard. You know, if Denver gets Brogdon, if they could work out a trade or something like that, they might be set because, you know, Denver Ben sucks. I'm going to try to get Denver more weapons before they got to yeah, play. Yeah, like, what are you tonight. doing? <laughs> Yeah, of all the no, teams just, in the league who probably doesn't I'm need shit talk, right now, it's Denver. I'm just I'm talking about I'm trying to look for fits, you know, for people, and that's the fit I, I that get, I was looking yeah. yeah. But I've seen the same thing. I've heard that as well, that Brogdon's yeah. probably going to be – if there's a piece still to move, it might be Malcolm Brogdon. So yeah. I, I've seen the same exact thing. But I, I haven't really seen any teams bubble up as far as people that are they're throwing, you know, his name out of, you know, he would be a great yeah. fit here, he'd be a great fit there. I've just heard he's a piece. But, look, Portland has shown you – in this off season, they'll be patient. And when the opportunity yeah. is right, if the deal is right and the, the money or the players are right, then they'll do it. But they're not rushed into anything. So I don't know. We'll see. We might, we might have Brogdon hang out for a little Smart bit. Smart organization. Yeah, no, they now, they played it right. I wanna I wanna bring something back closer to home, and I mean Atlanta. Well, you know, we traded John Collins this offseason to Utah. Oh, you want to talk about what spoke Collins at- said? Yeah, he, he spoke at his media day and he asked, they were Uh-oh. asking what the difference between, you know, being here versus being in Atlanta was. He was like, well, one of the things I really respect about being here is the lack of ego and how I can just, you know. Everyone wants the- to play together as a team. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh boy. Soon as some, you know, everybody leaves and then, you know, everybody can express how they really feel. And I, I was just kind of like, boy, who he, I know who he was talking about, but I'm like, hmm, who's he who talking, talking about? about? I don't know. Who is he talking about? Tell us. <laughs> we all know who he's referring to. <laughs> who is he referring to? Probably the, like, guy, if, probably the guy who said he was the most disrespected player in the league this week as well. <laughs> so oh. I say, here we go, boy. Well, well. Yeah, it's it's always it's always funny to watch these guys move. And then you get these little yeah. these little comments about, you know. And I, I wonder, though, how much truth there is in it or how much resentment is, is in it. You know what I mean? Because it's like all of a sudden, well, you know, no, egos, 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 egos. Well, I mean, John, you've been on the trade block for like three years in Atlanta. Yeah, right. So I let's ego aside, how much of that is resentment? You know, how much of that yeah. is, you know, uh, Atlanta never believed in me and kept me out there as trade bait for more or less two or three seasons. So I, hey, I, I think about this. I always tell guys, be happy that someone wants you because if you, and it, yeah. I mean, if you trade bait all the time, I mean, somebody wants you. So be happy. Once your name starts being trade bait, 
that means two to three years you could be out the league because nobody wants you. So be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cause think about it. You could be Tyler Hero, be the opposite. Oh. Mm-hmm. And when he said in his media day, he was like, "I'm here. I'm ready to play." You know, for the teams who didn't want me. Okay. And he and he <laughs> referred to uh, uh, Portland personally. He was like. Yeah, I know Portland didn't want me, but I'm not worried about Portland because Portland's not something something that needs to be worried about at the moment. So <laughs> he, he, you know, he feeling some type of way about still being in Miami, being on the uh, on the trade block. Yeah, and like the guys, the guys put their feelings in this game. So you gotta understand, this is the nature of this beast that you wanted to be a part of for years. Everybody get the ego and think, oh, I can't be traded. I'm good. I'm this guy. Everybody can be traded unless your name LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I think there's probably a few other people in there. That <laughs> yeah, Jason yeah. Tatum, MB. Yeah, yeah we talked about no, that. Guys ain't yeah. moving. Yeah, guys ain't moving. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You're right. So anything else from Media Day jump out to you guys? I think that was the, the majority of it. Um, oh, Bron- uh, Le- I think we all kind of figured LeBron did say that Bronny, I, I guess, was going to play the season for USC. Uh, uh, yeah, I think, you know, yeah, of- I did hear that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think a lot of us. I, would, I, would, I just, you know, for the love of my child, and, you know, and my child doesn't need to get to the next level. I would like, yo, we red shirt this year. We're gonna make sure you one hundred percent healthy because you don't, you don't need the money, you don't need to go to the league, you don't need all these things. I'm like, I just gotta make sure he's one hundred percent healthy though. So that's what I would do. But I, yeah. that's just me. But I know that's not my child, and I can't say. But I would definitely like Christian. No, dog. We wait. We're gonna do. We're gonna see every specialist we can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope. I hope he's. I hope he's healthy. I yeah. Hope he's healthy. I hope he's he gets out there and he's yeah. okay for sure. Uh, all right. Let's do a big shot of the week. I put some college football notes on here, but really, college football is weird this year. There's not like a mountain of stuff to talk about from the last couple of weeks outside of the fact that Ohio State almost lost and then pulled one out. There doesn't seem to me to be like a team in college football this year that's like, man, nobody's touching them. Everybody yeah. mm-hmm. has been vulnerable this year. I mean, damn, Georgia almost lost to Auburn. Uh, we've yeah. seen Alabama lose already. Uh, you had, US, I gotta say USC, that. <laughs> well, USC ran it up on Colorado, and it was like, oh, that's the end. And then Colorado kind of snuck back what in. What I tell y'all? What I tell you? USC. I, st- hey, I want to see. I want to see what Michigan. When Michigan plays someone as good, see how good they are. Yeah. Boo, boo. <laughs> You know, hey, people don't understand this portal is killing people because you that that fifth that that, that five star player you had as really a backup to another five star player, like all right, I'm out. You know, it's like it's, well, hold on, hey, Jim. It's going to do something about that portal, man. There's a team here in the South, state next the state to the left of Georgia. There's a team that plays in Tuscaloosa. And we have a person on this show who used to be a fan. And, 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 and that team, known as the Crimson Tide, are slowly getting better for what they have. They're improving. Yeah, they are. They're, They're improving. improving. Quarterback's been now, a lot better. Now, you know, we, there's a guy on this show that used to be a fan, you know, <laughs> uh, that Ooh. used to claim hey, him. Hey, you better, hey, point him out on this show. Call him out. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's not me. I didn't go to Alabama. <laughs> it's not Rob. Don't look at me. It's not I, don't because, I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, so I know uh, this process of elimination. Yeah. Is it, I just want to. I want to know yeah. when's the bandwagon rolling back up. That's what I want to know. When are we hopping back on board? Next year. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So if they year. get to the play, when they get they to get the playoffs the playoff. this year, then what? Yeah. They get to the play. They get to the playoffs. You know. Hey, play it for me. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> Rob don't care. Rob don't care. Nick Saban's in the office right but now going. Here's the thing, though. It, hey. <laughs> but here's the thing is, if you look at Texas' schedule, Texas has the easiest schedule. USC has the toughest schedule. So you know Texas is going to be there. You know Michigan, that conference is boo-boo. So they're going to be there. And Georgia has, you know, Georgia doesn't play Alabama unless they meet them in the SEC championship. Well, Georgia has an and, easy has the easiest schedule, yes, really, technically. Yes. So, yeah. So, and, and and the only thing about Alabama's schedule, they got they got Tennessee at home, they got LSU at home, yeah. they got a lot of, all the, the tough teams. But only one 
Auburn is always going to be hard, and that's on the road. But their schedule is pretty, you know, favorable. But I, I don't, I don't see anybody at the end of the day like going to beat Georgia. I think that damn, <laughs> it's just I don't too know, big, man. Too Georgia, Georgia has not been Georgia the last few weeks. Quarterback. Like Dave, Dave is not as yeah, good, but yeah, yeah, and they've survived. But I mean, there's been a couple of instances of survival for Georgia. Yeah. So for me, it's like when Georgia gets a legit opponent, how is that yeah. going to stack up? But see, here's the thing that we we look at the e whether a schedule is easy or difficult. A lot of people don't realize it's a reflection of the team that you currently have because a lot of people came into this game thinking that okay, this Auburn game wouldn't have been that difficult because of the way Auburn looked. But mm-hmm. you got joy. It's a role game. It's a rivalry game. Yeah. Hostile environment. Auburn's going to play up to their competition. They're going to fight. They're going to claw. And they put and them they to did. it. They put they them, put to, them it. to it. But his, I just, I didn't understand, like, the, 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 the quarterback they started and the other guy who's a better athlete. Every time you need a, it's, I don't understand. This is what I understand. You need a special play run. You throw him out here. Dude, he gets you your first down. And then you go back to this other guy, like, oh, shit. It's like, keep that guy in the game because he, Georgia was fearing that dude. I don't know the names, but mm-hmm. it's the black quarterback in a way. I mean, he was yeah, running that shit all over them, man. I'm like, dude, keep him in the game. I don't know if he can throw the ball or not because I don't watch Auburn, but I'm like, he was danger. Uh, that danger, Will Robinson, danger. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah, it, it's – and Georgia has to go to Rocky Top. Still, they got to go to Tennessee. And I think yeah. the way Georgia looks right now, that's going to be a very tough game going. And if there's a game that Georgia could slip up and lose, there were a couple of them already, and they found a way yeah. to win. Yeah. And I think Georgia's one of the few teams in the country that can work out their kinks in the middle of the game. Like, first half, they can look terrible. Second half, they can come out and just demolish you. Um, yeah. But I think that that Tennessee game, if they're not careful, Tennessee could really put their foot on their throat and not let up. You know who has the, the I call it the TCU uh, run to the championship is Northwestern. You Northwestern? Know, yeah, is it is it Northwestern? Is it? Is, I think it's Northwestern. It has, yeah, it's, a guy it's, it's, it's like who's on, someone's unbeaten right now and, uh, and up in the freaking top 10 it's that like, I was no, like, what? No, it's like, I think it's Northwestern, right? It has a guy who's like, like they talking like he's going to be the runner up for the Heisman behind Caleb. Is it N- no? Um, is it Northwestern or is it mm-hmm. runner up? Well, yeah, they said he gonna be runner up to Caleb because they said Caleb's it's Caleb's to lose, and they said this dude might be the runner up to Caleb. You're not talking about Washington. Washington is oh yeah, seven. Washington. That's it. Washington. Michael. It's called yeah, Michael Washington. Penix Jr. Yeah, Washington. That's the team we're talking about. Washington. That's probably. I'll tell you. Watch if they beat USC when they play them, they're gonna be because they're gonna like okay. Well, Nobody, this, this quarterback is carrying them. It's, they're gonna be one of those. They're gonna be the TCU or whoever it is getting there. And like shouldn't be in there, but they'll be in there. But they got to beat USC to have a shot at. Oh, it. they can beat USC yeah. because USC, be USC defense is a business. Defense. Well, USC's yeah. defense showed you last week that it's suspect. Yeah, I'm shocked yeah. at how bad their defense are. You're like I thought I'm they not. would be better this year. But I their offense y'all. has got to score 50 <laughs> points a game for them to win. Yeah. Thank you. you know? I told y'all they are worse than Charmin. Toilet paper. Wet. <laughs> it's terrible. Wet toilet yeah. paper. That's a visual. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, let's do Big Shot of the Week, and then we're going to play a quick round of Rapid Fire, uh, which everybody loves. Uh, Big Shot of the Week is going to go to Cleveland Clinic, uh, the Children's Hospital. And not that they don't do enough already, but uh, I just love when these hospitals and companies and stuff, they do a little bit extra. Uh, they had a 17-year-old patient named Megan uh, Crafty who was diagnosed with a brain tumor in May, and she had to come in for treatment. And because she had to come in for treatment, she missed her senior homecoming dance. So Cleveland Clinic organized the dance for her in the hospital. She was surprised by her boyfriend of two years, her family, and a bunch of other rehab patients. And she got to have her homecoming, senior homecoming, at the hospital. They did a, a winter wonderland dance for her. Uh, they did crafts. They had groups of people there for her. And... Just, I mean, again, an, a comp, an organization like Cleveland Clinic that already does the Lord's work, as far as I'm concerned, to help these people exactly. went even further to help this young woman. So big shot of the week to Cleveland Clinic. That was dope. 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's very dope. Yeah. You love it when people like, you, you know, so many people miss important dates like that, that they can't get back, can't get home coming back, but you can't get your life back either. And so she's there making sure she's healthy, her family, but the hospital went out of her way to say, thank you and hope this can brighten your day. You know, yeah. every little thing helps to me. A hundred percent. I mean, they threw the girl a, a homecoming dance in the hospital. I mean, that's just freaking awesome. It's freaking awesome. All right, well, uh, we'll wrap this thing up real quick here with uh, a round of rapid fire. Uh, I did not pull questions from The Weakest Link, Rob, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Rob's on me, man. You pull questions from The Weakest Link. You, you bet your ass I did. I'm not going to write 100 hey, trivia questions. But, hey, I love that show. So I now, you know, I, know. I just got to watch it more so in no. case you try no, to no, ease no. the sort of I, No, 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 no. We're in a whole different direction now this time around. Okay. Uh, so I've just got – General knowledge, pop culture, type trivia questions. We'll throw out as many as we can in 60 seconds, and we'll we'll see how you guys do. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. You want to go first, Rob? All right. Uh, yes. I'm going to put 60 seconds on the clock, and we'll see how you do. So, Stan, here we go. Close the clock up. Here we go. What's the name of the popular social media app that allows users to create short videos set to music? Instagram. TikTok. Uh, what's the name of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's oldest child? West? North? North? North. Northwest, correct. What North. fictional <laughs> town does SpongeBob SquarePants live in? Bottom? Oh, <laughs> Close. Bikini Bottom. Uh, what does Bikini f- Bottom. What does FOMO stand for? You ever missing out? There you go. What 2020 documentary had us all watching a bizarre world of big cat breeding and an eccentric zoo operator? Lion, uh, Lion King, Lion ti- 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 King. Tiger King. Tiger King. There you go. Uh, 90s parents watched on the big screen what might happen if you forgot your child when vacation, going on vacation. In what movie? Home Alone. Home, home Alone. Oh, just, missed, just missed it after the buzzer. Yes, it was Home Alone. Cut up! No, it was after the buzzer, bit, dog. Well after. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was. All right, so you got hey, Northwest. Hey, you missed that ball Bikini. was still in your hands, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you better redo the Derek Fisher shot clock. Oh, hey, no, 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 that's no, 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 no. One, two, three, Cancun. We're done. Uh, all right. Uh, we said you got North. You missed Bikini Bottom. That's where SpongeBob lives. I said Bottom. I, I said yeah, you, you were a point. Bottom. You got FOMO. You got Tiger King. Uh, so you got three. Uh, all right, B Dog, you got to be. Hey, it's so funny. Like, basically, you can still do short videos to Instagram too. So I should get them. <laughs> I'm not giving you that. No, no that's no, not. No, that's no, not no, the. No, that's no, not, no, that was no, not no, the no, original no, purpose no, of Instagram. No, 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 no. Technically, technically. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, B Dog, you got to beat three. Let's put sixty seconds on the clock. Let's see how B Dog. Uh, what does SMH stand for in texting? Shake my head. Correct. Uh, who did Jennifer Lopez wed in 2022 after we previously engaged almost 20 years earlier? Uh, ben Affleck? That is correct. What popular Friends star made a return to TV on Apple TV's The Morning Show? The heck if I know. Jennifer Aniston. Oh, uh, Aniston. Aniston. What, what is Eleven's favorite food in the show Stranger Things? Most popular show on show. Netflix, dude. Uh, it, it's favorite food. She. <laughs> I don't know chicken. <laughs> Ego waffles. It's such a black answer. What <laughs> it really is? What is the name of the fictional spokesperson Progressive has in- insurance has used since two thousand eight? Um. Oh. Buster, oh, I forget so. her name. I forgot her name. She's on every Hello? damn commercial. Yeah, for like Hello. thirty Hello. years. Hello. Flow. flow. Rob knew it. Flow. I got two. He won, and yeah, he had his poor show, and I had a worse one. Hey, go wobble. You said chicken. Eleven is a girl, a young girl with powers, and you're like, she I chicken. Look, I've never watched Stranger Things. You've never watched, you've never watched Stranger, Stranger Things? Things? No. It's like the most no. popular show on Netflix. Don't they have, a, they have another season coming out, right? I think season five, yeah. Is Guess what? Out. Guess yeah. what else I've never watched? Not one episode. Boys. I've never watched Game of Thrones. You okay. haven't? No, you it, gotta watch GOT, I, man. Yeah, I've I've watched a little of it. And I've never even got I've never gotten all the way through it. It's my only gripe with GOT is there's so many people to keep track of. 
that I, yeah, I lose people. track real easy. It's, and they all got long ass names. None of them are like Steve. Jim. <laughs> it's always like D'Artagnan of Gobalios. And I'm like, yeah. no, I got nothing. Hold the dope. Hold the dope. <laughs> and then always, that, that time is always the name and then son of whoever. Yeah, exactly. What? King of the of the North and son of the West. And I'm like, I, I got, no, I'm out, man. I'm out. Hey, what happened, I, what happened to shows, Billy? I'm like, where's Billy? Oh, yeah. Are y'all watching the Continental? Uh, oh, I got I to start that. I want to start. I haven't watched I it yet, though. But I just, got, I just watched uh, John Wick 4. I hadn't seen John okay. Wick 4, so I just yeah, watched I John Wick 4. So is it I, good already? Uh, the first episode, I watched the first two episodes, and yeah, it's, I like it. Is it good? It's okay. almost, yeah. What is days it? do they drop? I have no clue. I just watched it. Wait, do you know <laughs> what, what is it on? It. Is it Peacock or? I think it's on, I think it's on Peacock. Yeah. Peacock. Yeah. Peacock. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got to go watch it. I like to, I I, I've, I've liked the John Wick movies. Yeah. I finally yeah. got caught up to uh, Von B Dog's recommendation on Equalizer. I'd never seen the the first two Equalizer movies. What you think? So, Seriously? Uh, I no, I'd never seen them. Uh, they're good. They're very like. Um, uh, I'm try. I don't know how to really draw a comparison, but they 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 were they were cool. Like it's just the whole idea of he being like this non-assuming guy that works at a hardware store, like a Home Depot, yeah. basically. Yeah. And I mean, he's lighting people up with nail guns and shit. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> get him, Genzel. Hey, that's the, way more realistic. By that's way more realistic. And I love John Wick and Keanu Reeves. But getting shot fifty times and holding your arm up and then falling down four story buildings and being able to get up and walk freely. He's practically Dracula in all the John Wick movies. He just does this the whole time. Got his damn well, jacket up in front of his face half the movie. Well, his nickname is the Boogeyman. Yeah, 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 Baba Yaga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Baba Yaga. Uh, do you want to do one more round? Yeah, let's yes. go. All right, uh, all right, B, you can go first this round. Uh, okay. Let me find out where I left off. All right, here you go. Ready? Here we go. Sixty seconds on the clock. Load them up. B Dog, Brandon Harper. What 1988 comedy hit starring Eddie Murphy got a sequel in 2021? Got a sequel in 2021. Uh, this. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. Coming to America. Coming to America. Uh, of the three Marvel Chris's, Hemsworth, Evans, and Pratt, which one plays Thor? Hemsworth. Correct. Uh, what rapper is besties with Martha Stewart? Oh, Snoop Dogg. Correct. Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo are not only Renaissance artists, but what crime-fighting quartet? Ninja Turtles. Correct. What artist performed at the 2023 Super Bowl halftime show? 2020, uh, Rihanna. Correct. What female rapper is credited with coining the phrase Hot Girl Summer? Meg Thee Stallion. Absolutely. Uh, in the Disney Plus series, oh. Did hey, I was there? cooking now, boy. You were? Hey, hey, no, 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 no. He answered the, he, the, the Thor question wrong. No, he didn't. I said, of the three Marvel Chris's, Hemsworth, Evans, and Pratt, which one plays Thor? Hemsworth. And he said Hemsworth. Oh, okay. And that's correct. That's Chris Hemsworth no, plays Thor. Not bad. Hey, hey not that's bad, what happens when you don't mind the business that pays. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I need to get Gilbert Arenas to start fact checking the games, goddammit, I will. <laughs> All right. Hey. Don't threaten me. I, hey, I'm thinking myself that I missed that coming to America. Yeah, you I hate myself it, but you got of uh, Hemsworth, you got Snoop Dogg, you got Ninja Turtles, you got Rihanna, you got Megan the Stallion. You got five, man. Yeah. See, I would have got up. Megan the Stallion. Oh, okay. that's my generation. Yeah. All right, Rob, you got to try and beat I'll probably five. Say got to try and okay, beat five. Let's see. It's going to be 60 seconds here. We'll start where we left off. In the Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian, what is the name of Baby Yoda? Baby Yoda? That's nah, Grogu. Uh, James Cameron had an epic, action-packed romance hit in 1997 that broke all the box office records. What was it? Titanic. Correct. If you went to a dance or a wedding in the late 90s, you surely danced to what Spanish pop dance hit? Macarena. Absolutely correct. Uh, what English girl group had many hit songs, including Wannabe? Oh, I, I, know, I, know. I don't know. The Spice, Spice Girls. Girls. Uh, what style became a huge hit thanks to rock groups like Nirvana? Music style. Grunge. Yes. Uh, what was the car used as a time machine in Back to the Future? DeLorean. Correct. What American singer was known as the King of Pop? Michael Jackson. Correct. What American television host, actor, and rapper? Oh, I ran out of time, but that was How good. Many did you get? 
Let's see. You got a uh, Titanic, five. Macarena, Grunge, Delorean. You got five. You guys tied. You guys tied. Hey, so I wanted to say Spice Girls. I should say Spice Girls. You would have won with Spice Girls. You didn't know Grogu. Yeah. You didn't know Baby Yoda was Grogu. Um, I, I didn't know. I never know his name. The last question was what American television host, actor, rapper, and comedian has a notable amount of kids in recent years, including twins Nick with Cannon. Mariah Carey. I didn't even get to yeah. finish the question. So. Nick yeah. Cannon. All right, Nick well, we got to do one more round, so we'll start with Rob. <laughs> we'll start with Rob, and we'll wrap this thing up on the last round. Mm-hmm. We'll see who can pull out the victory here. Robert Ory, hang in. 60 seconds. Here we go. What singer holds the record for the most Grammy nominations? Mariah Carey. No, oh, Beyonce. Uh, what morning TV show recently had a scandal because two of its anchors were having extramarital affairs with one another? <laughs> Today's show. Good morning, America. America. Uh, yeah. What iconic TV show debuted in 1989 and chronicled high school kids at California's Bayside High School? Say about a bill. Absolutely. Uh, what show ran through 11 seasons and rarely left the Boston bar it was set in? Cheers. Correct. What was the name of the gang's green van in Scooby-Doo? Mr. Machine. Yes. What American actress married Prince Harry? Uh, damn it. Uh, the, the girl from Suits. <laughs> Can't think of a name. Meghan Markle. <laughs> what was the name of Microsoft's first game console released in... Oh, I ran out of time. First I think that was Xbox, sorry. wasn't it? It was the Xbox. It was Microsoft's yeah. first game console. I can so think of... Uh, three, three. You, you three. missed Beyonce. You missed coming. You missed uh, Good Morning America. You got Saved by the Bell. You got Cheers. I know it's you got today. Uh, Good Morning America. One of those shows. Yeah. You got three. You got three. Yeah. All right, Harp. You ready? Hey, let me just say those. Those three I got. Harp would have been that uh, pass. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, look at you. No. Look no. Which you. one did you get? Uh, I would have got the Mystery Saved Machine. by the Bear. I would have got Saved Cheers. by the Bell. You weren't even born with Saved by the Bell. I watch Saved by the Bell. <laughs> uh, cheers? Would you have gotten Cheers? Uh, possibly. Maybe. I, I know what Cheers is. I just never watched it. I want to watch that new show with the guy, um, Zach. He plays a show where he's oh, yeah, stuck he's in the lady's basement. Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. they're finding people that have been missing. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember the name of the show, but Mark Paul Gossler is the actor who plays <laughs> Zach Morris. Is yeah. what you're talking Got about, it. yeah. Um, you're like, I want to watch that new show with Zach. And everyone's like, the hell is he talking about? Zach? <laughs> the guy who plays Zach. The guy who plays Zach. Zach. All right, Harp, you got to beat three. You ready? Okay. All right, here we go. Load him up. The first version of what popular portable media player was released by Apple in 2001? iPod. The iPod. What day do Star Wars fans celebrate National Star Wars Day? I don't know. I can't remember. May the 4th. May the 4th. Oh, may the 4th be with you. Okay, (laughs) cool. Whatever. Who is Bruce Wayne, also known as? Batman. Correct. Uh, Who is the CEO and product architect of Tesla? Elon Musk. Correct. Who, uh, Who is the female actor who played Hannah Montana? Oh, uh, 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 uh. Come on, B. I came in like a wrecking ball. I know. Don't, don't. <laughs> I can't think of her name. Oh, no. Miley Cyrus. Miley, Miley Cyrus. Cyrus. What, why? <laughs> the wildly popular TV show The Office premiered in 2005 is set in what city? <laughs> you don't know where The Office is set? It's very famous. Rob, do you know? No, I don't. Scranton, I never Pennsylvania. Oh, what a great show. I never Scrant- watched it Scranton, PA. Scranton, PA. Scranton, PA. Dang, we tied still. So let's see. You're still tied. Shit. All right. Well, well pick a number between. No, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go one <laughs> We're gonna go one question each back and forth to one of your misses one. Oh, okay. Okay. So, Rob, uh-huh. let me see where the hell did I leave off. Uh, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> okay, Office. here you go. Office, yeah. Rob, which high school subject did Walter White teach in the show Breaking Bad? Chemistry. Correct. Be dog. Mm. Beyonce released her first solo album in 2003 after splitting from what 90s girl group? Destiny's Child. Correct. <laughs> Look, these are just random. Funny. These are random questions. It's random a Rob, <laughs> what American singer and songwriter rose to fame after winning the first season of American Idol in 2002? Kelly Clarkson. Correct. B Dog. What hamster like. <laughs> 
<laughs> what hamster-like creature spoke in a weird language and was the most popular toy of the late 90s? Spoken a weird language, what language, and was the most popular toy in the weird nineties in the in the nineties. <laughs> Rob Warren, I can't remember. Rob, do you know? Is it is it Pikachu? No, they were Furbies. Furbies. Oh, the, the most Furbies. Popular oh. Show, most popular toy of the nineties were Furbies. Oh, Rob, Furbies. congratulations. Yeah. I, thank you. I, I would say what's I thought it was the uh, what's the little bears they used to they had their own Care Bears. Care oh, Bears. <laughs> God nah, bless Furbies. World. I remember Furbies. Yeah, Furbies were everywhere. Weird. You can end Furbies yeah. suck, man. I mean, <laughs> like there was there was nothing worse than a Furby because once it started, yeah, 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 yeah you couldn't shut the damn thing up. <laughs> and we, we put one in a box and just was like, all right, go away.